Hello everybody. Thank you for coming back and watching last time. <sighs> I'm really glad that all of you came back despite the weird video. Um, how did you like the Peanuts album? I always love the Peanuts. Did you enjoy it? Did you click the link and go listen to it? Well, if you did, I'm proud of you. So a, bu a bunch of really good music in there and I love it. So I really hope you did listen to it. We're back with another show, and I have even brought you a new friend this time. I want everybody to meet my friend, Packrat! Packrat, you're our first guest on Social Distancing Storytime. <sighs> Tell everybody hello. Hi, kids! Packrat, why do they call you Packrat? Well, I am a rat, and I have this pack on my back, and I like to keep a lot of things. Oh. What have you kept lately? Well... I went around and I bought all the hand sanitizer and toilet paper from the stores. Pack rat. That's awful. Why? Well, I mean, a lot of people need that stuff. They're looking for that stuff right now. Pack rat, did you do this to help your family? No. Well, I mean, did, did, when you say you bought it all, did you get what you needed and then a little bit of extra to last? No. Pack rat. How much did you get? Oh, I could. Why? Well, I was going to sell it for a lot of money on the internet. Pack rat. That's awful. Why would you do that? Well, it's a good chance to make money. Pack rat. Being a bad friend and taking advantage of a situation. <coughs> Pack rat, you need to distribute some of that stuff. It's good to have what you need, plus some extra just in case it's out, but it's out because of people like you. You need to do the right thing, Pack rat. All those kids out there are watching you, and you're doing the wrong thing. It's not nice, is it, guys? All right, Packrat, we'll forgive you, but you need to understand, we're all in this together. It's time for you to do your part. No more panic buying. You weren't even panic buying. You're just hoarding. Well, I was being a Packrat. All right, kids, say goodbye to Packrat. Bye, Packrat. Until next time. Bye. Off to the store. No. No. We want to thank Pack Rat for his time, and hopefully he'll be a better friend. Remember not to litter, and he'll wash his hands. So, remember, we're all kind of in isolation, just wondering what's going to happen next, passing the time, and we're not panicking. And I went about exploring my house for something new to show you, because I like to get into stuff. And I found one of my favorite things. And that is a pack of crayons. I just think crayons are great. This is an eight pack of crayons and I found it in my crayon collection of all places. I know, strange place for it to turn up. But I really, I really love the eight pack because no matter what size crayon pack I end up getting, I only ever use like these eight colors. You ever go through that? But I really do. I love crayons. I mean, I, I just love the color. I'm not very good at drawing, which is probably a lot of why I like crayons. It's about the skill level I've got. But these crayons are Crayola, and I, I don't think that matters. I mean, I like crayons no matter which brand they are. But I don't think the brand matters very much. Uh, Crayola just made, in 1903, when they released their crayons, they were the ones that made the first crayons for kids. And... You know, they kind of changed everything there. Now, now you can just find crayons, and they're wonderful. They have a nice smell about them, a nice feel. I mean, I think one of the most wonderful things about crayons is that they remind you of when you were young, or at least I hope it does a lot of people like it does me. Now, I'm going to look at mine here, if I can get them out of the box. And see, these are all nice and new, and that's all well and good, but if you look at them, they haven't done anything. One of my favorite ways to find crayons is a big bucket like this. 
these are my kids' crayons, and their various ones are crayons from big coloring books, and they're crayons from packs, and somewhere in here, I'm fairly certain, are even restaurant crayons. But I love a big bucket of crayon like this because it reminds me of being at the doctor's office as a kid, and with a big bucket of crayons like this, you know, they're dirty. They got little marks on them from where all the other crayons have bumped into them, and they're missing their paper because so many people have loved them that they've had to peel the paper back. You know, the crayons have been so well used that they look a little beaten, but I see a crayon that is well loved here. This one's seen a lot of attention. And when you get near this bin, you can just you can feel all the hands that have been on them before, which now is kind of a terrifying thought, with as much as we're supposed to be washing our hands and everything. But seeing each other's bin of crayons is in my house, it's safe. It's kind of a spiritual thing that's not going to fly anymore because doctors' offices all over the world are throwing out their crayon bin right now. It's a terrible thing, but it's necessary. They're doing their part too. But this is my crayon bin, so I'm not going to throw it out. But a lot of people don't like crayons like this because some of them, you know, they don't like that they're missing their paper. And they don't like that the crayons are broken. I hear that one a lot. I see a lot of jokes and I hear a lot of jokes about broken crayons, but I'm going to tell you the secret about a broken crayon. They still color. They color just the same. If you peel the paper back a little bit, you know, I kind of think of a brand new crayon that's not missing any paper and hasn't been used like these. I see a lot of potential, but if you just put them away like this, they're kind of like a knight in shining armor. They haven't done anything. Get them out. Color with them. When's the last time you spent any time with your crayons? And don't let anybody tell you that you're too old to color. For those that say you're too old to color, I got this. I did these, like, recently. It's a... Uh, the guy from Nightmare Before Christmas. And that's Invader Zim and his faithful dog, Gurr, with his piggy bank. And that, well, we all know who they are. So you're not too old to color. And if it reminds you of being a kid, then it's all the better. Because you need to be reminded of that every now and then. You need to be happy and take joy in something simple. It may not be the crayon bin anymore because coronavirus is going to see them all in the bin. But it's okay. And one of the great things about crayons is you don't even have to have a fancy coloring book to do it. You can have part of a coloring book, you can have one page, or you can even just have paper and just draw. If you're looking for ideas, you can draw stick figures. You can draw a dinosaur, a cat, a duck. You can draw a duck. Who doesn't want to draw a duck? Draw a duck, put a picture of it online. Be cool. But you, you can just have paper and draw. It's a lot of fun. And so it's with that in mind that we're going to do a project today. I did this with my kids, and I think it's a lot of fun, but we're going to make something. I love to make things. That's what I'm known for. I like to do things. And there's a group of people out there called punks, and for all the misgivings about them, they had this strong ethic of doing something themselves. And I think a lot of people right now are learning how to do things for themselves again. And I think that that's, that's a positive we can take out of this. So today with nothing but at least one crayon and a sheet of paper, which I'm getting out of my desk right now. Yes, my little school desk, where I keep papers and crayons. I'm dropping things, it's okay. We're gonna make a toy using just these. Now you can have more crayons. If you have more, I'm gonna use a few. But as long as you have at least one crayon, you're gonna make, be able to make this toy. And what we're going to make is a boat. And you're going to get a little science lesson in here. This boat's really going to float for at least a few minutes. I've had one float for almost 20 minutes. But if you were to fold this piece of paper into a boat, what's going to happen? It's going to sink. It's going to get wet and sink. That's what paper does. It gets wet and it dies. But if you waterproof it a little bit, the boat will float better. And one of the things I love is this trick about crayons. Crayons are made of wax and they're made to transfer their wax onto paper. That's how they color. Wax. So for your nifty little at home do-it-yourself toy you can tell your teacher your parents you're not just making a toy you're learning. 
Wax resists water. It's water resistant. Oftentimes it can be waterproofing, but not for long. It's water resistant, really. And I even have clothes and bags and stuff that you put wax on, and it keeps the water out. It's called waxed canvas, and it's the old-fashioned way of keeping water out. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a boat out of paper that is colored in crayon, and you're actually going to watch it float. What do you think? You sound pretty cool? All right, let's get our stuff together. Get your crayons and paper. All right, so we have our paper, and we have our crayons. And the first step to making this toy is just to get the crayon wax onto the paper. So all you got to do to do that is something I know we all know how to do, and that is color. So you pick any color you want. I'm losing my crayon. And you just kind of go nuts. Fine, stay here. You just start coloring. Color like mad. Color it really well as far as a good coating, but you don't have to do anything specific. For once, there are no lines, there are no rules, just to get the wax onto the paper. So, color with me. It can be a family activity. So, these are the hands of Liam, and these are the hands of Xander. They've been playing pretty hard, digging in the dirt and stuff. So, they're gonna help me. Liam, get a crayon. Can I get one? Xander, get a crayon. And color. <laughs> Thank you. 
side of our paper to help waterproof it. Now it's time to make it into a boat, and I'm going to try and do this reverse to me so that it's right to you. And if at any time you need to, you can stop and rewind and use the directions. If you don't get it all in one go, and if I don't either, that's okay. You can always go back and try again with the same piece. Like I said, this is going to be reversed for me, so it's going to be a little unusual, but we'll get there. Ready? First, you have to fold your paper in half side, on the sides. So you make the corners meet up as best as you can. And then you make your fold, right? All right, so you leave that there. And then you turn it this way. Bottom should be open to you. And you're going to do the same thing again. You're just going to fold it in half. All right. Now we've made our fold. But this time, you're going to open it back up. See? Now you want to grab a corner, almost like you're making a paper airplane, and do this with it. Fold it down. And then you're going to do the same thing to the other corner. Very cool. All right. So now, what we have to do is we have to fold this bottom portion, just one. See, there's two of them. Just fold one. About like this. About up to the bottom. We're going to flip it over. And we're going to do the same thing. Oh, doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm going to go ahead and fix that. All right. And then you're just going to do it again. See here, now we're going to fold this up. Flip it over. Do the same thing again, right? Now this is where it gets kind of tricky. You're going to pick it up. And you're going to open it. Like this, right? And you're going to do what's called a squash fold. So with it open, kind of turn it on its side. And squash it down and make it kind of a diamond the other way. And then, once you've done that, you're going to fold the corner up almost in half, like this. Flip it over. You're going to do the same thing. And then guess what? You're going to pick it up and open it. And we're going to do the squash fold again. And now, again, here comes the tricky part. Ready? You got to grab these corners and you got to pull them out like this. Everybody see that? And then you just kind of fidget with it until it's right. But in the end, you will have, even if it doesn't stand up, you will have your very own toy boat. And I think it's even cooler because you did it, you made it yourself. I love DIY do it yourself. And this is a do it yourself toy boat made with just crayon and paper. Now, what do you think? You think we should go see it float? I do. One, two, three, and go. And there you have it. Our toy boat floats. Now they're going to try and push it towards each other in kind of a boat tug of war. Don't touch it. how it's done as you saw my kids took it in there and floated it they put some army men in it 
and they decided that the army men didn't get to get out of the sink when the boat was done. I went and got them later, poor guys. Make sure you ask your parents permission and probably for their help before you fill the sink up if you need it. You know, don't flood the house. Don't tell them I told you to. I told you to ask for help. Now that you've made your toy, or before you do, depending on how you want to do this, you can always watch my videos twice. I won't mind. I want you to check the description for a link to another video. I love this video, and if I'm ever having kind of a bad day, like a broken crayon kind of day that forgot it can color, I go and watch this video. It is a great video, and it's all about how crayons are made. I wish they would just set it to music and run it for like, I don't know, an hour or two, and I would just watch it for relaxation or something. But I think that that's a great thing, this video, and I really hope you go watch it almost as much as I hope you watch my videos. Last time, I left you with some music, and we're going to do that again. We're going to give you another link, and it's to the music by a man named Frederick Chopin, and you can call it your music to color by. Hit the link, grab your crayons, and get to work. Last time, you cleaned your hands, and that's a great thing. This time, I'm going to show you some video photos of my own kids helping me do some chores because they're home right now. I mean, my youngest son was already home, but my older son, who is always a good help, he has taken on learning even more about the chores that make this house go round. And I told you last time, your parents are really trying their best. I'm sure they are. And they may just need a helping hand. So the thing that you can remind them to wipe down are surfaces. And the surface that I want you to remind them of the most are your doorknobs and your light switches because we touch them every day all the time every day all the time we're touching doorknobs and light switches and they need to be clean so that's how you're going to help out your parents if they're trying to do the chores you can go and ask them if you can help by cleaning the doorknobs and the light switches and i'll show you my kids doing it go to the photos <laughs> chores remember don't give your parents a lot of grief and try and help them out they're doing the best they can with a situation that's hard on them everybody remember that we're in this together put your hearts or rainbows in the window whatever it is your teacher has you doing and come back next time thank you have a good time bye